Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we are now going to be diving into what things look like moving forward here for the Green Bay Packers, considering the fact that starting quarterback Jordan Love did suffer in an MCL sprain in week one on right at the end of the game against the Philadelphia Eagles. Super unfortunate the way that that played out. Just got rolled up on a little bit in a collision with Jalen Carter and Josh Sweat. So the good news is that he's not expected to require surgery. The bad news, though, the Packers are already 0-1 and are going to be without their starting quarterback for three or four weeks. And ultimately, you know, it's still the beginning of the season, whole lot of football left to play, but we have seen a trend that digging yourself into an 0-2, 0-3 hole can be detrimental to a team's ability to make a playoff run at the end. ESPN put out a stat that since 2019, there have only been two teams to make the playoffs since starting 0-2. That was the Bengals in 2022 and the Texans last year. So we've also seen it happen in each of the past two seasons, and the Packers are a good enough roster that I think they're more than capable of being able to get hot towards the end of the season. But but as for now, they're going to be without Jordan Love, and they are moving forward here, at least for the time being, with Malik Willis, who they just traded for just over two weeks ago from the Tennessee Titans. And Willis doesn't doesn't inspire me all that much as a quarterback. He's somebody that I definitely had some sneaky stock in coming into the NFL out of Liberty that I thought it would be fun. He is somebody who can at least provide, you know, if he could ever develop as a passer, he does have a running game behind him as well. So that's something that I would probably anticipate, especially as Willis doesn't even really know the system all that well for Green Bay that I feel like they're probably going to try and rely on his legs a little bit more but we'll 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 see how that works you know this is a team that at, honestly at least has a ton of different wide receiver options for him that it's not like you have to have this perfect rapport with the number one wide receiver that Matt LaFleur talked about it in the offseason. He feels like they have a bunch of different wide receiver ones from Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, Dontavian Wicks, all of these different players for them, not to mention some depth at the tight end position that... Heath, Romeo Dobbs, I didn't even mention. Like, they feel like there are a number of guys who can just get open for them. And that's probably a good sign for Willis, who isn't going to be hyper fixated on feeding one player in particular that. Not that they're probably going to ask him to be totally spreading the ball around, but you can kind of just take what's in front of you from that perspective. And I do think that that's a benefit for the Packers. Also, the fact that they should have a pretty good run game this upcoming season with Josh Jacobs in the backfield. I'm a huge fan of him. I I love Aaron Jones as well, but... I think that Josh Jacobs even probably provides a little bit more in the passing game additionally, so maybe uh, an improved check down option there as well at the running back position that, again, Willis just needs to sort of play within the system, not make any huge mistakes. The Packers, I would say defensively, I mean, I'm not... I'm not in love with them defensively. They have some good players, especially in that secondary. Edger and Cooper, the linebacker that they drafted into in this past year's draft, I believe it was the second round, he looked pretty good in the season debut against the Eagles last week. So again, I think that he just needs to sort of play calm and not get ahead of himself. And he could definitely stumble into some wins here because it's not like it's this you know, massive, tough schedule in front of them. This upcoming week, they are at home against the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are a tough team, absolutely. I wouldn't consider them world beaters by any means, and I think that there's a lot of inconsistency. As much as Anthony Richardson I am fascinated by in terms of him being a prospect, I don't think that he's somebody that, you know, 
you have to be extremely terrified with. Like, he is going to make mistakes throughout a game. The Packers are just going to need to capitalize on those opportunities. I don't love their chances in that game. I think I looked earlier, and the Colts appear to be two-and-a-half-point favorites. Like, that's probably not bad value for the Packers, but that being said, how much are you at? Like, are you actually going to be willing to put money, you know, for up for risk on Malik Willis. I think that that's a very risky bet, but again, I'm just saying I think the Packers can keep things close against the Colts at home this upcoming week. Then week 3, they are at the Tennessee Titans, which is another game. I think the Titans are one of the bottom tier teams in the league and they should be able to, you know, I think that they can definitely hang in that game as well. Malik Willis is actually former team, so that probably... It's interesting how you want to sort of analyze that as well. I'm sure there will be some sort of gamesmanship. The, the thing is, it probably more so benefits the Titans than it does Malik Willis. What I'm getting at here is usually when these types of moves take place, the Packers could just ask the Titans, okay, well, what do you know about you know, the infrastructure of this team and everything. But the Titans did just hire a new head coach in Brian Callahan this offseason, so I'm not sure quite how familiar Malik Willis is with their infrastructure there, but I'm sure he's got some pointers that the Packers could maybe maybe take advantage of. And then on the other side, the Titans definitely have intel on Malik Willis himself, so I just think it's kind of funny and interesting how the schedule broke out that way considering these circumstances. And then week four, you are at home against the Vikings. I think that's probably a tough game. Um... I, I mean, we'll see. Maybe the Vikings were a little bit of fool's gold in week one. They played the Giants, which you do have to take into consideration, obviously. The fact that it's not like they made this huge statement game against one of the better teams in the NFL. It's against the Giants. So, you know, or yeah, so we'll we'll see about that. And then week five at the Rams which is probably a very tough matchup for them. And I think, I, I, you know, we're predicting at this point now, four weeks out, I would assume that if Malik Willis is there, probably a pretty shaky game for the Packers. But, you know, just laying all of that out there, that's probably, at least from what the early reporting on this Jordan Love situation has been, that's probably the latest Jordan Love would be out. And there is at least one or two winnable games in that stretch. So... My sort of thought process here is the Packers need to be at least two and three coming out of this. They have to pick up a couple wins because, you know, again, I think that some of the stats about 0-2 or anything like that, like they can be skewed a little bit because it's like, okay, such a small percentage of 0-2 teams actually make the playoffs. Well, what percentage of those 0-2 teams are actually really bad teams versus a team that's just dealing with an injury at the quarterback position, but is overall still very talented overall. And my art my, to that point, I would say the majority of 0 2 teams are probably 0 2 caliber teams. The Packers are definitely better than that, in my opinion. So I don't think it's a death sentence for them if they do, you know, sort of struggle out of the gates here. Now, it doesn't help that they play in an NFC North that is pretty talented. I had the Lions, Packers, and Bears all as playoff teams entering this season. Sure, Bears didn't look great week one. We'll see with that. I'm still not selling all my stock just yet. I'm a big believer in that defense, and if Caleb Williams comes along, then I think they should be set up pretty well. The Vikings, though, kind of surprised people with week one. Again, don't want to get overly ahead of myself because they beat the Giants, but you know, the Vikings are a team that anytime anybody goes to Minnesota in that dome, I think that it is a very tough outing. And I really do believe in Kevin O'Connell as a head coach as well. Sam Darnold, yeah, sure. They lose J.J. McCarthy and all the wind gets sort of taken out of the sails with Minnesota. But I don't know how much better J.J. McCarthy would have been than Sam Darnold for this season. I don't think it's a real significant drop-off, if any sort of a drop-off at all. So that's kind of the, 
I, I, I just think that generally speaking here, the NFC North is very talented and that does make things a lot harder for the Packers to try and sort of climb their way back into the season if they are in, in, into the playoff hunt if they end up uh, dropping a handful of games early on, especially considering the fact that Sharp Football Analysis has them with the sixth hardest schedule, I believe it is, in the entire NFL. So that's not a great sign for them either. I definitely have some concerns with the Packers. And I, you know, to, to sort of wrap this up cleanly, I don't think it's a death sentence necessarily if the Packers do struggle out of the gates here. I think they need to win at least two of their first five games, and then they're going to have to hope that there is not a drop-off with Jordan Love immediately because it's a very tough schedule ahead of them, and there is a real concern, at least in my eyes, in terms of them having to fight uphill against this division and in an NFC where I think it's going to take 10 wins to make the playoffs. So... Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section, but we are going to be taking our final break here, and when we come back on the other side, we're going to be switching gears from the NFL to college football, and we are going to just be running through some of the biggest games in college football this upcoming weekend, but before we do so, we're going to take that quick break, and we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 